After a lovely day and a half up in Milan, we've made our way south on the Italian peninsula and we are now in the center of the Renaissance here in Florence, Italy. You can see the Ponte Vecchio behind me. We are right on the Arno River and we're going to spend the entire day here in Florence exploring and seeing all of the amazing architecture, the influence from so many historical figures. This is where Michelangelo and Galileo and Leonardo da Vinci had their influences and you can just feel it as you're walking through this place. They've done a really good job, I think, of keeping it historical. It doesn't feel like it's a new city, there's not a tram on every street. It doesn't feel very modern. And it shouldn't because this place, it just holds history. We only have about a day here, but we're gonna fit in as much as we possibly can. Most of the European cities we've been to have had old towns where it definitely feels like you're in a different time period. But in Florence, it's like almost the entire city. Right, it's like a whole old town turned into a city. It really feels like we're not in 2022 right now, walking no. down the street. So this right here behind me is one of Santo Spirito's famous wine windows. So back in the day, if you wanted some wine, you just had to find one of these, give it a little knock, and then a servant from the estate would come out, collect an empty bottle and some cash from you. They would go down into the cellars, fill up your empty bottle with wine, and bring it back. So efficient and so secretive. And very recently they started bringing these back because just what a great concept, a wine window. As tempted as we were by the wine window, it's still a little early for wine. We're gonna head over to the Ponte Vecchia, cross the Arno, and show you this really, really unique bridge. It has Roman origins, and it's perhaps the coolest bridge in Florence. So we're now in the middle of the bridge where you can see down the river both ways and it's crazy because it kind of sneaks up on you with all the shops on both sides. You don't really feel like you're on a bridge and then all of a sudden you get to this middle part you can see the perfect river view both ways. This is a very very medieval style bridge because you have the souvenir shops and everything on both sides. Back way in the day this is where trade happened a lot because this is where the boats would come. So for gold, for silver, for even iron, it was all sold right here. And of course, the art. The Medici family was actually a family that ruled over Florence for a long, long time. They had, at one point, probably the most impressive collection of art in the world. It's kind of funny how now it's like the modern version of what it used to be because they definitely did exchange jewelry, precious metals back in the day, but now it's like there's a Rolex shop and all these necklaces and rings. So we've just passed back over the river and there are hordes of people out. Tourists everywhere. Yeah, it must be getting near that time to get gelato and spritz and shop because we were here maybe a couple hours ago and it was like a ghost town. Now everyone's out. So this requires a little bit of explanation. This might be a little bit of a train of thought, so make sure you keep up. It's a bronze model of a bronze model of an original marble model that was actually made by the Greek Empire. So obviously the Romans conquered the Greeks, but at one point it was thought that the Greeks had more artistic influence and built better statues and architecture, and the Romans were the better warriors. This particular model of the bronze boar, the legend or the story around it is that you're supposed to make a wish and rub its nose. You rub the coin on its nose and then put it in the fountain and then your wish will come true. And you can actually see its nose is all worn off from people rubbing the coins on it. This is the beautiful Duomo de Firenze, made up of white, pink, and green marble. It's unlike anything I've ever seen before. So we've seen a lot of cathedrals and they still take our breath away. Construction on this site started in 1286 and it took over a hundred years to finish. Across from the Duomo's entrance is the Battistera. This is where baptisms took place. And it has become a tourist attraction in itself because of these gold doors, arguably the best part of the building. We just walked around the Duomo and no one is on the back side of this building. Which has been a rarity today because it's been very crowded. We've arrived at the next location on our list. This is the Piazza della Signoria. My Italian's horrible. This is like the main square and right behind me is the city hall. What's cool about this place is you've got a lot of the restaurants out here with the outdoor seating and everything. We heard that during COVID, like all of this was shut down. Like no one was even around here. It's just nice to see people out again and things getting a little bit back to normal. Today is actually the day where the mask mandate has lifted in Italy. It just all feels a lot more normal. 
I find it absolutely fascinating how there's so many models around Florence of the really, really famous sculptures and works of art. For example, Michelangelo's David, it's everywhere. There are multiple Davids around the city. Here's one of them right here. It's not the original, but a lot of people like to pay homage to Michelangelo. Uh, yes, please. Oh, oh, the mango. One more. One more. Um, the Nutella? Okay, we've held off for long enough. We finally got ourselves some gelato. Finally. This is so famous here in Italy, obviously. And I think it's just because you get to walk around with it and still see the sights. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> so I got quite the weird combo. This first one's a Nutella. Wow, that is shockingly accurate. Okay, next in my weird mix is mango. Whenever I see mango, I want to get it. Mango gelato is like one of the most refreshing things in the world. I also have stracciatella, but it's all the way to the bottom, so we'll get to that later. I got a scoop of caramel, a scoop called Inferno Hell, which I think is just dark chocolate, and at the very bottom is tiramisu. So we'll have to update you on that later. I'm curious about the Inferno Hell. <laughs> Me too. So we made it all the way back over to the Arno River, which is of course so important during the Renaissance for trade. As we walk through the city and just see all the architecture and think about the Renaissance time period and all the achievements in art and science and innovation, it's so cool that this was kind of the center, like the epicenter of all of that happening. It's really incredible to think that Galileo is here, Da Vinci, Michelangelo, all these people. He lives here. It's an influential place, full of influential people for a long, long time. We have a few more things to tick off the box, but I think we are saving the best for last. We are making our way over to see the best view in all of Florence. Okay, last religious landmark today. There's a lot of them here in Florence. Religion played a huge part in the building of the city, what made it so influential. And Sydney, a few of those names you mentioned before, Galileo, Michelangelo, their tombs are actually right here in this basilica. Wow, that it, is crazy. It is the Basilica di Sante Croce di Firenze. That's a mouthful. I don't even know if I did it right. <laughs> but again, this basilica has that green and pink marble that is just so specific and so beautiful. Now that we've been here, I feel like if you see this in a movie or even a postcard or whatever, like it's so recognizable that it's Florence. Okay, so we're gonna end the day the only way we know how, find the best view we can and see the sunset. Maybe some pizza or pasta. pasta.